All right, lads and ladies. Um, this is uh, part two of the Scavenger series. If you followed along for part one, um, good. If you haven't, you don't need to um, have done Scavenger part one to follow this Scavenger part two tutorial because this one is dealing with um, animation for the most part. It will help if you've uh, used uh, followed along done scavenger part one but as I say it's not necessary what you will need is blender 2.8 out 83 alpha if you haven't got it already download it I'll put a link below I've also put a copy of this um, tutorial on my gum tree I mean my gum rolled repository you can download it you don't need to download it to follow on, follow along with this tutorial okay let's jump in first thing first when you boot up blender 2.83 alpha you're gonna uh, be faced with the splash screen depending on what version you've you've downloaded uh, the splash screen might change um, but just click on a general once you've clicked on your face with this um, offensive box delete it press D to delete okay now I'm assuming that you're gonna um, use my reference material. If you if you have downloaded it, what I want you to do is click at X on this uh, spinning icon here, so that your screen is now front. And then I want you to go add image reference. And once you've clicked on the reference, you you you, you come up. If we go, um, I'll do it again. Add image reference. Then you just basically find it, find it here. It's quite self-explanatory. Open up whatever folder you put it, put it on, um, load it up, and then just position it, say around here. Okay. So once it's done, it's there. Okay. So that's that done. So the first thing we want to do is set up our preferences. How we're going to do that is we're going to go to uh, file, sorry, edit preferences. And the first thing, I'm going to increase the resolution so that they're slightly bigger, just so the icons are not so small. These icons are not so tiny. So I'm just going to make them a little slightly bigger. You can have them as big or as small as you want. But as, as those who know the score, that I'm a bit of an old geezer. I need them quite big, you know what I mean? So, right. So we've got that sorted out. Right, the next thing I want you to do is just scroll down to a key map. I want you to make sure that this tab for ply menu is activated. Yeah, once that's activated, uh, just click X and it's, it's done. The next thing I want you to do is, if you've um, downloaded my uh, the reference image, um, not the actual file itself, the animation file, but the actual image, image reference file I want you to um, import it as a reference image and how you do that is click on this X icon here so that your screen is facing frontwards and then I want you to go add image reference not background reference and then I want you to find you wherever you put it find it load it and then load it up it's pretty self-explanatory and once you found it load it up yeah and once you've loaded it up, you can just position it over into this corner here. Right. So that's that done. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our grease pencil object. So if we go add um, grease pencil blank, and now we've added our grease pencil object. You can't see anything at the moment, but don't worry about it, it is there. And then you see that icon here, that should appear called Grease Pencil. I want you to double click it and type in T-Rex. T-Rex 17. That's the name of the character. So once that's done, I want you to swing up to the top. Now, if you've made your icons uh, pretty big like I have, um, you can scroll to the end of it with, with your middle mouse button. And if you click on the plus icon, 
I want you to click on 2D animation. And now you're gonna be faced with this front facing screen. I want you to just click X and you're gonna be faced with this screen here. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, let's set up our layers. So a grease pencil, I'll just explain what a grease pencil object is. A grease pencil object is a, in its own right, a 3D object that you can move in, um, X, Y, and Z coordinates. I'll show you more in detail exactly what that is once you've created the, some art. Um, and each grease pencil object has its own layer. Now, this is the main object called T-Rex and underneath it is a layer. So let's call this um, animation layer. It's always a, it's getting a good habit of uh, naming your layers and your objects because it can get very confusing very quickly. So that's our layer. Uh, if you come in from a you know Adobe Photoshop um, scenario, this would be easy to grasp, but it's still a little bit more different because we're um, in Adobe Photoshop. You have layers for your whole scene. Imagine your grease pencil object can have uh, layers, but each. It, each individual grease pencil object can have a, a, its own set of layers. So you could have 10 objects with 10 sets of different layers, you know? So you can get very confusing. Don't worry, it eventually sink in. Don't panic, don't just run away. It will eventually just, uh, it, it will sink in, trust me. So anyway, we go to a new layer and let's call this uh, pencil. All right, that's, that's all we're gonna do at the moment. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our keyframe um, onion skinning. Now, onion skinning, um, if you're not aware of what onion skinning is, onion skinning is like, back in the day, traditional animators wouldn't have the, the light, they would have the light box, and uh, some, some of them still do it now, if they draw on paper, they have the light box, and you can see they were drawing it and then to see the frame below the drawing that you just drawn, they would switch on the light box and they, the, the, the procedure they use, they call it is onion skinning. You know, like an onion, you can see through it. So literally with your drawings, you can see in front of it, I mean, below it. Um, in this era with digital era, we've got our own light box, but it's um, digital and we can see frames uh, before, after, and obviously we can, um, be a bit more sophisticated on when we see our frames but for the, just for the time being let's just keep, let's keep things simple we're going to just type keyframe um, we're going to click on keyframe and just go all types and keyframes before keep that as it is and zero keyframes after zero we can change that setting later but this will do for now so that's that done so if we scroll up and if you look at these icon here you've got start and end um, that's the start frame, that's the end frame, it's 250. We're not, we're, we don't need 250 frames. We're gonna do this run cycles, eight animation, for, it's an eight frame animation. So if we just clicked on here, um, when I say eight frames, it's like eight keyframe animation. I'll explain about keyframes later, but for the time being, the start frame one and end frame, frame eight. Now, you can move your, your what's again key your 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 scrub bar by using this icon here. I would suggest don't use it. Just use your mouse. I mean your um, your middle mouse button, and you can just click down and you can move it back and forward. Now if we zoom out, you can zoom out with your middle mouse button um, up and down. So if you if you notice, see those empty this kind of highlighted frames. These are our our, our frames, our animation frames that are highlighted, these are the ones we're gonna be using. One to eight, as I say, we could change it to if we wanted more. And if you see, it then um, will increase. But as I say, we only want eight. So that's that done. And I say we wanna zoom in.
Okay, so that's that done. So we've got our animation frames and we've got our um, grease pencil uh, layers. So what we wanna do is create a material now. So if we just click on this icon here, this is called your material icon. Let's click on here and then just click on new and then just, we're gonna call this pencil. Type in pencil. Now, this icon here is our vertex uh, color um, selector. I want you to click on there and make sure it's blue. And click on it and then you're gonna be faced with this palette. I want you to just uh, delete this palette by clicking this X key. I want you to just go new and I'm gonna call this pencil. And then I want you to, um, once you've clicked on that, I want you to create a blue pencil plus, and we want you to create a, uh, a gray pencil Doesn't have to be exactly like my one. And then I want you to create a, a red pencil. Okay, so that's that done. So we've got that, it's some pencil. You've got pencil material and pencil uh, thing, uh, vertex color. Now what I want you to do now is we want to save these preferences. So if we go file, Defaults, save startup file, yeah? And now basically what's gonna happen is every time we boot up Blender from now on, um, we're gonna have this set up. So we don't have to do it again and again and again. We've done it once and it's done and dusted. Let me just double check that we're recording, otherwise if we haven't, I'm gonna be crying. Yeah, well, we're recording, so that's all good. So we've set up this, um, all of this, now it's for the, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna set up a, a couple of guides. So instead of creating layers, as some more in the guides in our layer background, we're gonna just create some empty objects just to help us for positioning our character, etc. the floor, plane, etc. So if we go to object mode, and if we then go, um, Add empty single arrow, and the arrow's created. I want you to scale up that arrow. Press the S key, and the arrow will scale up. Scale it up a bit. Then I want you to position. You see this icon here? This is positioning icon. Just click on there, and you can just position it. Just position it about there. So scale it up a bit more. Position it. So this is the arrow key. I want you to duplicate this object. How you do that, you can just right click with your mouse button and then just go duplicate objects. And now we've got, and you can drag it and then we've got two objects. And now I want you to rotate it by clicking on there and you rotate it. This is just basically gonna be our floor. Okay, so we've, we've, we've got that, we've got that sorted out. So as I say, we can just save that, our um, defaults, save startup file, but also get in the habit of saving your file as you go, go along, so file, save as, and we'll create a directory, wherever you call it. In my directory, I've called it a scavenger, uh, Part two school skill level Egypt. I'm sure you're not Egypt. Um, and just just give it a name. Let's call it part one. Part sorry part two. Uh, let's double check I saved it in the right directory. Part two school level. Yeah, there we go. So that's there. So that's that done and dusted. So. Literally now, we're ready to start drawing.
Um, did I say we're going to start drawing? Well, I lied. I'm lulling you into a false sense of security. What we're going to do is set up two more things and then we are going to start drawing. First of all, um, the guides that I create, there's empty objects. So I want you to just, um, just lock off the location and the rotation. So you do that by just dragging and the scale. So just that we don't, uh, by accident, uh, click on it and move it around. The other thing I want you to do is we're going to set up a thing called quick favorites. So I want you to click on your uh, grease pencil ob object that you should have called T-Rex 17 and it's in the scene collection area, this area here. Click on it and I want you to go to object mode and then draw. And then I want you to set up a, a couple of quick favorites. Quick favorites just allows you to um, quickly jump from, say for example, to draw to, to um, erase. So, say for, so how we do that is we cl click on this icon here and then just right click and then go um, I've already set up as a quick favorite so I'm just going to remove that and then this is when you go on it right click and go add to quick favorites I want you to do the same with um, your eraser um, I've, as I said with my eraser it's already set up I want you to set it up so just right click add to quick favorites and then every time you press Q say for example I was to draw now I told you we we're going to start drawing. So if I if I start to draw now, and then I wanted to erase it, instead of having to go over here and over hit erase, you just hit Q, and then you can erase. So it just makes things quicker. Another quick tip is I want you to use for your eraser. Don't use point or dissolve. I want you to use stroke. It's just so much easier. So if we drew a, a, a stroke. We can um, erase just by clicking over it. Yeah. So let's stick on there. Right. So let's just rub that out. Make sure that your pencil's on grey. You're on pencil in this icon here. I'm not going to go through all of these at the moment. Because all we're going to be doing is using our pencil. So we want our pencil as our main icon here. And we want vertex color to be activated. We want our gray color. Sorry, let's just use our blue for the time being because that's the sketching one. We want our blue to be active. In our grease pencil layer section, this icon here. I want your pencil to be activated and obviously your pencil material. So this is the setup that we're going to go with. And now we are ready to start drawing. If you look at the reference image, the, the thing that I've tried to emphasize here is the bone structure. When you're doing creating any animation, um, it's important that you understand the underlying skeleton. Now, some people talk about, oh, you're drawing stick figures. I would say, don't look at it as a stick figures. Look at it as if you're trying to understand the underlying bone structure so your first pass even we call this pencil um your our first sketch is going to be just a really rough um pass as in we're not going to try and do any detail of the character we're just trying to get the the rough uh, skeleton layout so his pelvis he's uh Pelvis is about, let's just uh, use lights off. By the way, you can, um, by pressing the F key, you can increase and decrease your brush. So if you want to make your brush bigger or smaller, press the F key. Okay. Okay, so his pelvis 
I'm going to draw on this uh, center line. So it doesn't have to be perfect at this stage. We're just kind of roughing out. Now I've got my hotkey set up to delete. I suggest you do the same. I showed you how to do that. So you can you can do that. Or obviously you can just uh, hit hit erase when you when you make a mistake. See that I hit I went to the edit mode quickly. Make sure you're on when you go to edit mode if you want to move the whole stroke up. When you go into edit mode, you, you're faced with this screen here. Now you've got your vertex points. If you want to move individual vertex points, you can move them. Or but we're gonna just we're not gonna worry about that at the moment. We're gonna just using um strokes. So click on this, make sure this icon is selected. And then we can just drag this um because what i'm going to be doing is moving this stroke um the stroke that i just drew upwards so i'm going to just move it up i'm also going to add this in edit mode to my quick favorites as well so i'm going to add that add to quick favorites i'm going to add that one to my quick favorites as well because these two i'm going to be using a lot and also i'm going to add the select box to my add to quick favorites because these three and I'll add the scale to my quick favorites because the, these are the main ones I'm going to be using a lot. Let's, uh, and by the way, I'm also, I'm being a bit and, and projectious. I um, can't even say the word, but you know what I'm getting at. Basically, I'm using a tablet and a mouse. I find using both together is easier. My, you might not have the same problem, but my, my pen tablet is not um, that great for selecting icons, etc., and for fine, fine stuff. So I, I usually use both my mouse and my pen tablet. Okay, let's just scale that up a bit. And as I say, at this stage of production, we, we're not looking for perfection. We're just looking for a rough drop down. So if you notice that, if I go to, just go to draw mode, I've created it in my infinite wisdom on frame one. I don't want to do that for starters. So let's just click on it and then we're going to just drag it. To, to, I mean, I started it on frame eight. I wanted to start on frame one. So let's just drag that to frame one. Hopefully you've not done that the same mistake. Where you start off is you see this bar here, you can drag it and back and forward. So I want you to start with your, um, to your bar on frame one, not eight like which I did just a minute ago. So start with it on frame one. Okay. So the other thing that we want to look at is, and this is what a lot of traditional animators do, and this is imperative that you do so as well, um, is they usually start off with a line of action. So even though I've just drawn that, what I should have really done, start off with a line of action. So you look at your character, where's he, where's, where's he going? Or, you know, like a nice curve, whatever. In this case, he's not really curved. It's just, uh, that's kind of the rough line of action. Work out where his, his head is, which is roughly about here. And he's got his, uh, his little claws about here. The other thing I want to talk about is what I do as well. So, okay, we started off with the, this very rough uh, looking uh, box figure. Now, one of the reason why I created a red pencil is when you're especially doing a, a run cycle or anything with complexity, it's always good to, to, to maybe draw one side of the character in a... Uh, 
like for example his leg so let's just say his leg his right side let's draw it in red so even though we drew it in blue let's just overdo it in red the reason why I do that is it will become obvious when we start seeing animation then you can see what side of the character you're doing so it's easier to to get an angle on on stuff especially when the animation gets starts getting confusing so you if you if you know you're dealing with the the right leg and it's always in red it just makes your life uh, easier it, at the moment it doesn't seem that but when you start getting into it you'll see so okay so frame one is done I'm gonna do frame two and then we're gonna skip forward because you don't need to see me doing every single frame so in frame two he's kind of uh, he's, he's, he's making that stride so he's making he's making a stride now he's slightly higher up I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm guessing as well so and right if we look at this if when you go to frame two and you can't see uh remember we talked about um onion skinning and the frame before if you click on it if you go to frame two and you can't see anything the reason why you can't see anything is because onion skinning is not turned on so let's just turn this bad boy on so we click on there and now we can see this is our onion skin this is the frame before so make sure that's on and then you can see your your onion skinning so now we go to two and as i say I'm gonna I'm gonna hazard a guess on this one that he's when he's striding he's slightly higher up in the air just slightly if he's not we can change it if it doesn't work properly As I say, we're not at this stage. We're not trying to. Um, and when I go back to go frame frame one, I think this is this leg hair. I've made it too, um, too forward. In this movement, it's just. Uh, See what I'm doing now. I'm gonna. I want to see that frame before. Oh, I don't really need it. I'll switch back. So. So you can switch between your frames by just simply, you know, dragging the the handle here. You can also use your um, your arrow keys to switch between uh, frames. So if you want to go, the up arrow keys will. If you click on this part and then you. You can jump between your keyframes with your arrow keys. Or you can just scroll right with that. I usually use this to scroll. Just find it easier. 
Okay, so I've basically done two frames. That what what I another habit I try and do is I'll try and number my frames. I know you've got the numbers here, but I usually try and draw uh, the frame numbers as well, so you so you don't get confused. Right. So what I'm going to do now is you don't need to see me draw every single one of these uh, outlines, these kind of skeletal um, rough outlines. So I'm going to skip ahead. And then we're going to come back and we're going to have a look at the skeleton that I've drawn. And then we can we can um, basically break it down, have a look at what I've done. And uh, and then and then we're going to carry on from there. OK, so we've basically uh, created a rough blocking out of the character running. Now, if you notice, I deleted this, his towel, and I'll tell you why I did that in a moment. But before we move on to that um, explanation, let me just talk about um, frames per second and tw um, traditional animation, because it's important that we, under we understand, understand um, the terminology like 24 frames per second, shot on ones, shot on twos. Okay, so basically, back in the day, um, when animation first became mainstream, the pioneers at Disney and some other studios kind of termed, uh, started animating in 24 frames per second. Basically, what that means is there's 24 uh, single individual uh, pictures per second. Basically, in film, the way, the way they would shoot is you'd have literally um, one picture, 24 pictures per one second. So that's where 24 frames per second come in. Now, obviously, in the modern day, you get terminology like 30 frames per second, 60 frames per second, whatever. Um, my suggestion is keep it simple. Use the old school techniques, which is 24 frames per second. So basically, a long time ago, when I was a, uh, um, a uh, teenager, I used to work as a runner as a, at a studio. Um, uh, called Felix Films in uh, West End of London and uh, that was when I was first introduced to uh, frames per second and uh, shooting on singles and shooting on doubles so what they what they basically you'd hear animators go oh we're going to shoot this on singles and we're going to shoot this on doubles so what, they usually shoot single very fast movements on singles and they shoot other uh, animations on doubles and the reason why they do that is but they usually shoot on doubles and most and studios shoot on doubles because it saves time so basically what it means is let me explain exactly like this is if you look at this animation here it, when i scroll it with the the header bar it doesn't look that bad but if i was to hit play now it doesn't read that well because if in the traditional sense it's shot on singles, there's a single exposure for every single frame. So it doesn't read that well. However, if we was to um, shoot this on doubles in back in the old day, there would be two exposures for every single frame. So if I select all of these frames here, move the header over to um, the very first, uh, so it's the very first frame. Then I want, then you, if I was to press S key, and then I was to press the number two on my keyboard, you see that, and then I press return, you see all of that, it, it then spaces it out to um, more frames. So now, now if we then went to 16, actually we want it on the, yeah, let's 16 is fine. And then if we then, so it's one to 16. And now if I was to press the play key, look what happens now. See that it reads so much better. It reads properly. So that's how, what when, when we're dealing with single exposures and double exposures, this is what I might sound seem a bit weird and but it eventually the penny would drop. And this is how, um, traditional animators work and this is what you need to to understand now as i'm going off on on one and we're talking about theory and stuff what i'm going to talk about now again is um if you're serious about becoming an animator uh 
and you're not just doing it as a hobby. My suggestion is uh, you need to get a couple of mentors. I'm not saying I'm the greatest man. I would say, let's if I'll be honest, I'm more of a, I could be good for technical, uh, at this particular joint, uh, technical stuff. And uh, I could help you in your technical role with mastering grease pencil. But I think it's important um, to, to gravitate to some great mentors, um, especially online. You've got Aaron Blaze, he's an uh, ex-Disney animator, and he's, even though he's a bit stingy on his uh, YouTube channel, he doesn't have that many free stuff, he, you know, he's a professional, he, want, he need you, everybody, like me included, yeah, you want to get paid, so you could, he's got some great tutorials, paid for tutorials on his website, I'm not, I'm not in any way affiliated with the guy, but I, I, I do, uh, when I see talent and, uh, great leadership in animation field I, I I want to promote it so he's someone you want to you want to look at and look at his channel every now and again he, he posts some good stuff free but I would strongly suggest you buy um, a, his animation courses they at the moment I think he's got a free one the fundamentals of animation and I think if you if you pop over now before he changes he changes changes things you can get the fundamentals fundamentals of animation for free from his website I put a link below um he's also got an acting one I think you should check that out the other a, a couple of there's a couple of books that you need to get as well one is uh in my view uh, a great book uh, I've learned a lot from it it's cartoon uh, animation um, by Preston Blair great animation with lots of uh, with lots of uh, reference uh, walk cycles run cycles etc in it and then and also talking about the theory and there's another book I would strongly suggest, suggest you get and that's The Illusion of Life by um, if, I, if I remember correctly by Ollie, jo Ollie Johnson and a few other Disney great Disney animators so they're, they're, these are the, they're the books that you need to get into. Right, so let's get back into this. So as I say, we've scaled this animation and there's another uh, 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 tip and trick that I, I think is important, not just for 2D animation, but 3D animation. I've noticed with a lot of animators, when you see tutorials or whatever, they're working with like, you know, you'd be, they'd be doing an animation frame and um, an animation sequence. And they, they'll have like, you know, I don't know, like 200 frames or whatever to do a walk cycle or, you know, or say, to me, that's just too hard to manage. You don't need that many at when you're first blocking out. It's like what I would say at this stage, we're blocking out the animation. So we don't, we're not, we don't need uh, a palette, if you will, if I call it a palette of animation frames. We don't need that many. We just need a, a few to block out our animations. So, like with this, we've done. We've got sixteen, um, and it's easier to manage with with, with a, a small amount of frames, especially when we when we when we're getting the rough movement sorted out. So, what I did, as I say, what you saw, what I did there, I scaled it up to two. What I would suggest you do, get in the habit of not especially at the early stages, not um, using too many frames when you're blocking in your animations. So you can switch between, like say for example, I went up to, I scaled it to two. If I wanted to, I could scale it. I want to scale it back to the normal eight frames. So what I'll do is I press, make sure my key, my mouse pointer is on my keyframes. Press S. And then if I go 0 0.5 and I hit return, it would bring back my animation frames to my a normal uh, f small eight, you know, like eight frames. And then I can just, you know, when I'm when I'm just trying to block out my animation, I could just deal with eight frames. So it's easy to deal with. You make less mistakes. And then when I want to make when I move when I want to move up, I could then move up to again by pressing S and then two. And obviously you've got to make sure that you're on your very first frame when you do it. And you got S and then two, and then we can hit return. And then again, we can have our, our, our back to our normal frame. We can just hit undo if we want to go back. So I'm just gonna undo it, edit. 
and we're back to my normal eight frames. So get in the habit of doing that. It will save you time in the future. Because animation, as I say, as I said in in other tutorials, is all about the flow, trying to get into it and getting into the groove of, of animation. Right. So as I said to before, um we, we've got these eight frames. So I, I deleted these towers. The reason why I deleted it, because I wanted to do some uh, kind of I don't know if this is gonna work in animation, but if you the, the, the main things that if we get back to the animation, the main things you're going to notice in, in this animation here is the the pelvis. The pelvis is really important in, a, in animation. And uh, in this animation, there's no, it's no exception. In that. Oh, and before we go into that, you might notice that this bar is, is down here before it was up there. If I right click on it and I can go header, flip to top. So you can have it at the top and flip to bottom. The reason why I've got it bottom because it's just like a little bit, I'm, it's, I'm maybe I'm being a bit lazy, but I just, it just, it's me, it's a workflow easier. So I don't have to go up there to, to change the color. I can just do it in here. So at the bottom, I find it easier. Okay. So right, back to what I was talking about. If you notice with this animation here, um, and sorry, there's another thing that I, I, I didn't tell you guys about, so forgive me again, is you can move your screen around with the hand icon. If you haven't worked it out already, you can move your screen around, and this can zoom in and out, yeah? So for, it, was, it was remiss of me not to show this, especially for you new users, because this was meant to be for you new users, this is real. So you can use that. And you can also use this to flip and rotate your 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 animation, your your canvas as it were. Right. So if we look at it, you see what is the main thing is is his pelvis. If you look at it, his pelvis is is going up and down, and it's it's also rotating a bit. So if you look at this leg here. See, it's moving, it's moving in that direction, and it's tilting and rotating. This is an important thing that you got to work out with your, with your characters, your pelvis, your hip movements are the, one of the most important things to work out. In that, this goes for three uh, D animation as well, you know. You get that right. So, and also, if we look at it, the, the other thing that we, if we look at this, the movement of his, his body on that movement there when he hits the ground, his body's shrinking. I mean, his body's is going lower. So you need to get that movement right for this to kind of be convincing. So that's the two point important parts you got to do to get right. Now, what we're going to try and do here with this animation is we're going to try and do some, uh, some anim some secondary type of animation as in the sense of, as I said, I'm not sure if it's going to work totally because the reference I'm using is I'm using a reference from a, a movie, a great movie uh, animation series called Primal. If you haven't checked it out, I would suggest you see it. So, um, uh, the same guy who done Samurai Jack, he inspired me to do this T-Rex character. So I'd, I strongly suggest you check out the reference or, or check out the animation series. So if we look, I want his animation at, at this, at, when he's down at his lowest point, which is frame number four, I want his towel to be at his highest point. So I'm gonna go to frame four and I'm gonna, I'm gonna just draw his frame, the towel there at frame four. So that's at its highest point. And at its highest point, which I guess, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I guess it's a frame one is the towel is, is at its highest point. Now, if we go to our, our keyframe setup, and this is the beauty of digital animation where it, it, it surpasses uh, traditional hand-drawn animation, 
is that we can um, we can have a look at our keyframes. So if we want to look at um, And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this frame here and I'm going to press the R key. Now you don't have to do this, but I'm just throwing up some options here for you. Press the R key and then we can have this as an extreme key. It doesn't save anything in our scene, but it makes life easier to look at when we're looking at onion skinning. So number four is going to be an extreme key. We could change it back to a normal key later. And then I'm going to change filter by type to... Um, extreme and keyframes uh, after we don't even need to do that I don't think so now if we go back to one and then if we keyframes after two two three four four then if you can see my my now that keyframe is the only one showing it's come out quite let's change the color this color is a bit oh, it's just uh, there we go so you can see it's easier to see now so now we can see that 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 extreme key and so frame one I want as I say at its lowest point I want that key to be at its, uh, that towel to be at its highest and on frame one I want it to be kind of at its uh, lowest and uh, I didn't want to create a new frame here let's do that Uh, it might be too extreme, so I might play with it a bit. So I wanted to do that. So it's like the and also when we're talking into when we're talking about animation, now we're also talk, talking about secondary and wave wave animation, wave flowing out from animation, etc. I'm not getting into that in this tutorial. In a, in later tutorials, I will do, but at this one, I won't. As I say, when you want to learn more stuff about things like that, it's, it's good to look at these, these books because they'll probably explain it better than I will. And Arrow and Blaze is a good place to go. So I've done that. So I'm looking at that, the towel there. So what I'm going to do now, so I'm going to play around with this animation, with the towel. And I might do some secondary animation on his head as well. And then I'm going to get back to you once we've done that and we can... Uh, again look at this animation see the progress or <laughs> or the lack of progress thereof of this animation see where we where we're up to with it so we're okay so I've uh, very roughly drawn in the t-rex the in a, a bit more detail so um, I've only drawn in one frame. I've not done all of them. I've only done one. And there's a reason why I've only done one. Is if you notice on um, the learning resources, his head doesn't really change much. Um, I might have him blinking in the, in, the, when, in the final animation, but for the time being, he doesn't really change that much. So we could obviously draw each and every single one of his heads on each, each and every frame. Obviously, it rotates slightly on one of the frames, on a couple of the frames, but that's... And it's only a pivot point of his 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 head changing, not the actual structure. So, a way of dealing with uh, just copying his head is this is how we're going to do it. We're going to go to edit mode. Make sure in our overlay, see this icon there. This is the overlays icon. Make sure three D cursor is on. I just put that on and make sure your um this stroke select sexual stroke points is on make sure in your grease pencil um, um layers this squiggly icon that your layers are both active 
yeah so now if we then uh, let's just select this box and make sure you've got select box on and we're just gonna right click and just go over select this his head doesn't matter if you if more of it copies over it doesn't matter at this point and then we're gonna right click and basically go copy and then we're gonna move to another and uh, another frame and we're just gonna hit move our 3d cursor over here make sure that this icon here transform uh, pivot type is on 3d cursor make sure it's on 3d cursor and then just go paste and then it pastes it there and let's move it to frame three and again let's just paste it and frame four so these heads rotate it down a bit we're still going to paste it but i think i've gone a bit too i've, I've moved his head too much so i'm going to just rotate it but not as uh, aggressively as it as it is in there and you see if you notice it's rotating around that pivot point we can move the pivot point and make it rotate around the different point of the pivot point now in a, there's, I've got other tutorials on my website that deal with the pivot points. I'm not going to go into it here. Um, check it out because it's really integral to uh, understanding grease pencil. I'll put a link below about um, pivot points and understanding the 3D cursor a bit more because you, you will need it a lot. So we've moved this head slightly. Let's go to frame five. Again, let's move the 3D cursor again over here. And then hit paste and move it down a bit. Just move the 3D cursor over a bit and then rotate it. It doesn't matter at this stage, we're, we're still roughing it out. We're not, we're, we're not finalizing anything. We're kind of just still roughing things out. And then just paste it again, this is frame six. And rotate it slightly. And frame seven again, just do another paste. And final frame eight, paste. So we've we've got our head, so we don't have to draw him again and again and again. So again, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna fast forward, I'm gonna draw all the rest of the frames, and then when they go, come back, and we're gonna have a, a, the very last little chat because we're not gonna ink him in this uh, in this uh, part. We'll, we'll ink him in part three and color him in part, in part three. So we're gonna have one more chat about after I've done that, after I've done all the detail, uh, and let's see how we get on, all right. Okay, so I've uh, roughed him out, as in uh, done a first pass with the pencil, and uh, I did a a layer for his stripes. It's just just for his stripes, because uh, I just thought it'd be easier to manage in in the future. Um, what am I gonna say now? Right, so the thing that you need to analyze when you when you when you look at this particular animation and any animation in 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 any animation you do in the future is you've got to think about things the principles you've got to think about are arc in movement you, everything in life pretty much and for the most part work with arcs you look at a a fly flying through the air it's an arc movement you look at a a hand gesture, someone moving his arm, it's, everything's like a flow. That's why I, I, I talk a lot about flowing animation because everything is arc based, arc. Even with the rhythm in, in, in movement, in grace, it's all about arc. So if you look at this, um, I made a, a point of just drawing these arrows here because if you look at it, it moves on an arc. You know, everything is arc based. And when you work that out, it helps when you it helps with your beauty of your animation that you that you think about arc in movement aaron blaze uh, 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 a disney animator who works on who worked on the lion king he talks about this a lot in his about arcs and rhythm 
and the, the great animators they understand that the arcs rhythms it's not just in your in your animation but in your drawing your gestures your gesture lines with arcs fluid lines so think about that another thing i would like you to consider in this animation if you look at the pelvis look at that pelvis movement see the way it it, it, it rotates that's another important thing you got to look at your see that so i would suggest that you know look at this animation not as the the, the finished uh, article but just as a blueprint and improve on it if you can so this is the the next uh part is going to be we're going what we're going to do in the next tutorial part um scavenger series three is we're going to ink this character and we're going to color him so that's it uh, I'm out. Laters.